So my name is Ifo Majerith. I work for a civil society organization called Public and Private Development Center. So we follow the money. And PPDC over the years have been tracking public finance expenditure. And what we do basically is that we seek to increase citizens' participation in governance in a way that supports improved integrity in public sector governance through procurement monitoring and also reporting on how public funds are being judiciously utilized by the government. And over the years, we've been supporting different groups and civil society organizations and also investigative journalists to report and also track the performance of, um, to track uh, resources, especially those ones that are being executed and also implemented at the grassroots level. So for us, why is public procurement important? We have a number of reasons why we track public procurement in Nigeria. Because number one is uh, a good size of our national budget expenditure is incurred through the public procurement process. This is the process by which our government purchases, acquires, and also disposes of goods, services, and works for the people. And for us, it is the key. If we can get our public procurement processes correct, we know we've gotten everything correct because for us, that's the bedrock of everything we are doing as a nation. Then again, the state of national infrastructure and standards of living are largely dependent on procurement effectiveness. Again, public sector organizations are spending public money. They have the legal and moral responsibility to ensure that it is spent as carefully as possible. Yes, we have a Freedom of Information Act that was enacted in 2011, which mandates public institutions to proactively disclose how much they receive and how much they also spend at each uh, fiscal year. And over the years from my experiences, it hasn't been easy because we have to send this request. And even though the law mandates them to disclose within uh, a period of seven days, we most likely do not get res re uh, responses within this period of time. Most times it takes like one month, two months, three months, depending on how. And most times we also find out that release of this information, which are also crucial for people to monitor uh, capital expenditure uh, utilization, you know, is subjective, is not institutionalized. You know, it depends on who's the uh, director general or minister of that MDA. That's when, you know, they release this information. So public uh, interest kind of doesn't really outweigh how they also disclose this information. And again, um, Federal Attorney General, that's a former one, Andoka said that 80% of corruption cases in Nigeria emanate from the procurement of goods and services. Of course, I know some of you are familiar with one you know, statement by the British uh, former ma prime minister that Nigeria is uh, one uh, fantastically corrupt. And you know, because of this, I'm also going to back it up with this uh, statement because our uh, uh, procurement system in most cases are characterized by nepotism. You find public contracts being awarded uh, to cronies and they don't follow uh, the due process because there, are no, there is no standard uniform that can actually serve as a watchdog to look at what people are doing at a particular time because everything is done manually so you can't actually track each project from its inception to its uh, implementation stage. So we have public procurement monitoring prior to open contracting. These are the things we witnessed. These are the things we saw. Corruption was the order of the day. Inefficiency, data incoherence, opacity, Public institutions don't have that culture of dis, uh, disclosing information. They hoard information. Even though we have a legal framework that backs this up, they don't actually disclose in this information. You have to write thousands and tons of requests before you get it, if, if you actually get it. Again, open government deficit and mismanagement of public contracts, then poor citizens' participation. For us, it was data incoherence that led us to the Budishi story. Because for us, the citizens who pay taxes has the right to track how public resources are being utilized. So even in a situation whereby we have this information, it comes in different format. They, they, yeah, sometimes they have code, but that code they have doesn't translate to following it 
following a budget line from its inception to its implementation. And for us at PPDC, that was what stood out for us. That was what led us to develop Budeshi. Because in most cases, we get information. We, we, we got stuck on the way because you don't want to assume that a particular budget line item was the same one that we are talking about in procurement processes. So even though you have budget estimates with code, those code doesn't translate that. That's a particular, that same project they are talking about during the contracting stages. So for us, it was a big issue because we are procurement monitors and we also go to the grassroots level where this project are also implemented. So we needed a system. We needed a platform, a standard platform that can uniquely have a unique, each budget line, each project will have a unique identifier, a unique code, and that will also facilitate, you know, proactive disclosure of information, timely disclosure of information. And each project should have a unique code and a unique identifier that can allow and also strengthen citizens' participation during the budgeting and the contracting process. And that's what stood out for us as procurement monitors. And that's what led us to open contracting data standard. And for us, we want something that we can actually put in context. We want something that people can get used to because it, it, it is open contracting is really, was really new to Nigeria. So we want something that people can see as our own. And that's why we coined the word Budeshi. Budeshi is a local language in Aousa called Open It. So a Budeshi story. Um, yes, it was actually an eight months advocacy. We started reaching out to Bureau of Public Procurement when we have uh, this platform. They are the regulators of public procurement. It really wasn't easy for us, but we needed a champion because the government of the day has the language of anti-corruption. So we needed someone that can actually champion this cause, someone who really understood what it takes, someone who understood the problem we are facing due to inaccuracy and inefficiency of our procurement system. And that was the person that stood out for us was the Attorney General of the Federation. He championed this cause. He took it to the highest executive order. He took it to the highest level. Level, and during the anti-corruption summit in May last year, 12th of May to be precise, our federal, the federal government committed to adopt OCDS as the Open Contracting Data Standards in some priority sectors, education, health, agriculture, and of course, oil and gas sector. But we never waited, you know. We came back, even though the commitment has been made. We started rolling out, we continued with our advocacy to make sure that we effectively implement this and BPP of course because when the commitment has already been made that's what we needed and BPP of course who never you know kind of showed us that commitment had to join the cause because they had no other option and today we see that Nigeria has started adopting the open contracting standard and for us we never stopped because why did we pick the OCDS it gave us the value for money it gave us, it, 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 was, it detects fraud and corruption for us. And corruption was the, uh, you know, corruption was the thing that we have over years have been suffering from in our system because our procurement processes are not kind of efficient. It's not the way we want it because of corruption. And a lot of things happen because that corruption makes it impossible for contractors to execute contracts the way they should the way it should be, even though they get this contract, they go to the grassroots level because nobody actually monitors them. Everything is done manually. Nobody sees what they do. So they are free to get away with anything that they do. Then competing for contract. Yes, when we have the system, everybody sees who does what. You know that you are being watched. You know that you have to follow due processes. You know that if you do this, the uh, anti-graft agencies will see you. They will catch you and you will face the full wrath of the law. And again, monitoring service delivery. For us over the years, this is one of the greater, greatest problems we are having. The citizens don't have access to information. And as a result of this, they were not able to effectively monitor procurement processes, especially the ones that are close to them at the grassroots level. And that was why we decided to go for open contracting data standards. And this is what it looks like. This is what it does for us. It makes that comparison. This is uh, one of the uh, projects we visited in a state, in Benue State. You see the comparison, you can visualize excuse me, you can visualize the way you want. 
especially contract budgeted amount and contracted amount for each particular project. And again, this is also what the OCD is. When we put data in this platform, it links it and geotags, geomaps, each project location, giving you names of the contractors, the local government area where that project is, the status of status of that project and in most cases the status of projects we collect through FY requests doesn't necessarily mean that those projects are completed in most cases you see that the project in the uh, data you have stated that the project is 100 percent completed but when you get to the project site and this was what stood out for us using Bodeshita's platform you get to the site you find out that that project has not started it hasn't even started. The contractor has not even reported to the site. And this was what OCD has done, did for us. Because all these projects here, that, as you can see, were stated as completed projects. But with the Budeshi platform, we got to the field and we found out that most of them we are already delayed. It, yeah, they've already started falling off. The roofs have already started falling off. Some of them we are not even um, constructed. We had an example, a project in Delta State, Bureau to one of the local government. In the status of the uh, data we have, it said that the project was already completed and is in use. When we got to the place, there was nothing on ground. The citizens, the community never heard of anything, never saw any contractor on ground. Then impacts of Budeshi. This is what we experienced. This is what Bodeshi using open contracting data standards has done for us in Nigeria. Time, timely disclosure, a watchdog system. I've already spoken about this. A watchdog system, everybody sees what is happening. And recently we had an example of someone who wrote to National Primary Healthcare Center and public institutions has already started referring them to go to, you know, to go back to Budeshi, that PPDC has already started disclosing this information. And lots of them are doing this. So even while we are waiting for the open contracting portal to start running out, you see public institutions already requesting that we come train them because they want to get ready and you know be ready till the uh, pending when the platform kicks up so it's also a referral by public institutions it detects fraud and corruption like the Brutu case i just talked about now then it also integrate data standard into current record keeping this is what we actually wanted we want a data standard to be integrated into the manual current record keeping we have in place but not something that will look so tedious for public institutions because they are already used to manual way of record keeping so for us OCDS captures everything we want and it also in a simple format that people can actually relate with and we also don't want something lo looking like an extra work to what they are already doing and again it also pushed for greater sector reforms now we have this currently BPP just reached out to us that they want to make their new system they are building the e-procurement system to be OCDS compliant because they've seen the benefits of what open contracting data can do and other sectors too we have the oil and gas sector also reaching out to us telling us that they want to also adopt this then it also heightens civic engagement after um, the current the last uh, town hall meetings we had at the uh, state level we have people reaching out to us through our social media handles and also sending us letters you know they keep asking us to release this information for them because for them it's uh, this is the gateway because they've seen the link between data, access to data, and how it also affects their daily life and their, also, their welfare. And for us, this is what we want. We want the consciousness for people to understand and then use these available tools, you know, to also monitor how public funds have been uh, utilized. And also, you also improve public service resource management. And it's also aiding accurate policy decision making. For example, now, I'm... Um, our government, our public institutions, because they've seen how much have been put into, uh, for example, National Primary Health Care Center over the years. The government have been funding a lot, funding the, um, uh, funding the health sector and it's in the budget in the national budget you also gets the highest funding but that doesn't necessarily translate to efficiency in our health sector but with the platform what we are seeing at the grassroots level we found out especially at the local government level that 80 percent of the primary health care centers are just structures there are no equipment there are no staff and every year 
they are still funding into that sector. So with this, when we've identified this, we take it up to the federal government. It helps to inform their next policy because now instead of constructing more primary health care centers, they are, for, they are equipping it and also uh, employing staff and other things instead of just constructing structures which doesn't treat people. Then these are the current steps we are taking. We've started, we've started scaling open contracting to the state. States have started you know, reaching out to us. Then capacity building for 